Sabrina Grover, Anani Paradzi, Carl Belanger, and Rachel Aiello. Sabrina, let's start with you on this one. When you look at those numbers, what do you think is the government's most pressing issue as they head into the summer? I think as the government uh, goes back and, you know, they have, they're going to have a caucus meeting, they're going to have a cabinet retreat, I think the most important thing for them to think about this summer is how they build out an economic message and how they tie their policies to the economic message. I think if you're a voter on dental care or child care um, and you strongly believe in the, the strength of those policies and how they respond to your life, then you're already probably a liberal voter. But on the economy, on this affordability issue, the liberals need to show more bench strength and they need to show more narrative strength. And so, you know, if I was giving them advice, that's what I would tie the message to. They've done a good job prosecuting uh, Pierre Polyev on what he's going to cut. And I think they can bring that back in the fall. But over the summer, I think they really need to tie it back to, to an economic message. I think that it's a, you know, the foreign interference is still a bit of an insider's game. I don't think it's necessarily resonating a ton with Canadians. Obviously, Pierre should read the report. But um, I think over the summer, the, the economic message and the supportability is still going to be what people are going to hear at the doors. And Melanie, I know that Pierre Polyev wants to really hammer that economic message, but two-thirds of those respondents, including a majority of conservatives in that Angus Reid poll, say that all leaders should read the report. Do you think that's enough to push Mr. Polyev to read it? Well, even if he reads it, there's nothing that he can do about it. And this is this is the problem. There's only one person in this country who has any power to do anything about this, and that's the prime minister. He has the power to release the names of people uh, who, who are listed in the NSICOP report. He has the power to um, to you know waive waive this requirement and just brief up Pierre Polyev. He could book that meeting tomorrow, um, but he's not he's not doing it. I think what I glean from this polling is that there's actually something that there's a common thread between the foreign interference issue and the cost of living, and that's how it makes Canadians feel. So I think pollsters often look at like issues and decide is this issue resonating. I think we have to look deeper than that. Both of these issues make Canadians feel powerless. You feel powerless about the cost of living crisis because you're working hard, you are making the same amount of money that you've been making, and now it just isn't going any further. You've done nothing wrong. You're doing all the right things, and you still aren't getting by. With foreign interference, no one seems to be doing anything on your behalf. There's just, we, are, we seem to be frozen and allowing people to sit in Parliament who are actively aiding and abetting foreign governments. No one's taking action. And this is that also makes Canadians feel powerless. So I think that feeling is what's going to resonate over the summer. And that's a really hard feeling for the Liberals to erase in the Canadian mindset. Carl, how do you feel about how Melanie is tying those together and the feeling that Canadians are having right now? Um, I mean, I guess she has a point about the powerlessness of, of the people about this issue. Uh, I, I think, though, people are way more angry about cost of living than they are about foreign interference. And, and they certainly, you know, even though they think leaders should read the report, I don't think they'll change their vote based on that. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to government, uh, you know, uh, of course, they are the one in power. They're the one who could release names. They could the one who could act. Uh, the fact that they're not doing something is hurting them and them alone. Uh, it doesn't really hurt Paul Yev that he's not reading the report, and I don't think any conservatives are saying, well, he hasn't read the report, therefore I'm going to vote for Trudeau. <laughs> not happening. Uh, when it comes to, to cost of living, though, uh, that's, you know, that's an, uh, an underlying narrative that is hurting uh, uh, most governments in place right now in yeah. the world. It's not only in Canada that people feel like that, that they're going to be, be poor in a couple of years. Uh, it, it's true in the UK where there's an election right now. You see those numbers in the States, across Europe, you see that. And, and, and I think that there's no easy solution because if there was one, you would have a model, you would have a template, and governments would get out of trouble. They're not. They're, they're paying the price right now. It doesn't matter if they're left or right. And, and in that sense, I, I don't know what Justin Trudeau can do about it until you know, people feel that they have enough money to make ends meet. Yeah, and there's nothing really, Rachel, for them to change the channel with because Parliament will be taking that hiatus for the summer. And it could be the thing that people are talking about as they're grilling whatever they can afford to grill on their barbecues. Yeah, what struck me about the Nanos numbers was that this sentiment uh, about... Canadians feeling like the next generation is going to be worse off is exactly the argument the Liberals tried to make with their budget. So I mm -hmm. think they really need to head out into the summer and think about how they are communicating their message around this, because Polyev came out swinging in his opposition to the capital gains with a very clear message about why it's bad. And now he has a country that up until now has been feeling uh, hard done by, all of a sudden concerned about 
potentially having their $250,000 plus capital gains quad back. I find that so fascinating. So I'm really thinking the Liberals are going to have to find a way to communicate what they're trying to do to prevent that next generation of feeling worse off and, and find a way to try to sell this measure as well as the things that they're trying to spend the money on instead. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that'll be uh, key for them to do, because otherwise conservatives are just going to galvanize around this new job-killing tax, and then they're going to have the pile-on of Polyev probably costing up what he's putting into that RV in terms of gas and, and the cost of that for his road trip, and then hitting them with that. So you mean it's not electric? <laughs> oh, I don't, I'm not sure that it is. I haven't done the research. Can't say definitively. Uh, Sabrina, talk a little bit about, I mean, you were saying that, yes, they're going to have a caucus retreat. And, and, a, and a cabinet retreat as well. Uh, do they not have to do something before that to try and get out ahead of that message? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think that that's kind of the, the message heading into those retreats, and that's what they might want to come back and frame up with. But certainly, I think as they head into the summer, this economic message has to be uh, front and center. I think they're helped by the fact that the economy is doing better. It is improving. We have the rate cut. And I think that that's likely to continue, or the trend is likely to continue on positive economic upswing over the next couple of months. And I think that will bolster the message that they can deliver at the doors about how things are going. And I mean, listen, like Doug Ford's thinking about calling an election based on the positive upswings he's had with the with the Liberals, right? And the upswings he's had on the economy from them. So I think that there is a message to be sold. It's just about how they package it and how they uh, get it out there. And remember that last year, Pierre had to cancel half of his carbon tax rallies because of wildfires, because he doesn't uh, want to actually talk about climate and talk about those things. And that's going to happen again this summer. Um, I think it's probably going to be worse than it was last summer. And I think that's a message that uh, is going to be easy to sell at the doors as well. Melanie, what do you think? Is, is he going to have to pull over the RV because of that? <laughs> well, I certainly don't think he's going to be taking it to Toronto because there's no way he'll be able to find parking in that city for, for the RV. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that Canadians are going to look forward to meeting him across the country um, on this tour. I think it's a lovely way for him to spend time with his family and, and to also meet with, with the electorate. Uh, and see them in lots of different communities that maybe wouldn't get normally get a, a political stop. Um, I think it's a great way to to reach them. Um, I also think, they're changing the channel a little bit here, that part of the discourse this summer is going to be the U.S. election. Um, that the, the first debate is next week, and so that's going to start heating up really soon. I think that's going to turn a lot of people off of politics uh, for the summer, as, as they often tune out anyway from it. Um, and so, but that's certainly something that I'm watching for is what's going to happen um, over the summer with the U.S. election. Carl, with that election coming up, the U.S. election, doesn't that benefit Trudeau? Because he can sort of make that case, hey, look, I've uh, gone head to head with this guy, possibly Trump uh, before. And hey, I can be the antidote. It could be if Trump, you know, somehow comes back up in the polls and it looks like he's going to be a winner. If he doesn't, though, then it doesn't really take hold yeah. you know so so the, the the problem with the u.s election i think is bigger for pierre polyev than it is for justin trudeau because you will have a lot of the statement by trump that you know if i was a liberal i would use against polyev and say what do you think of that what do you think of that and go after polyev for what trump says um will they do that well you know they also have a responsibility to manage uh the relationship with the potentially the next president right. so but if i was a liberal strategist right now i'd tell you play that card yeah grabbing those clips and looking at that um, th that that debate next week, for sure. Uh, yeah. Rachel, we're going to hold on. You're going to stay there because you're going to take a week uh, look at the week ahead. Sabrina Grover, Melanie Paradis, and Carl Boulanger, thank you all so much for joining us.